Welcome to Mastering and Guideline in Ultrasound and Echo. Hi everyone. In the first uh, part, uh, there were two topics has been missing. So first we go uh, talk about that uh, two topics and then we go for the pathology. Now let's do it. Welcome. As I mentioned, uh, the ultrasound of the lung can only create image from the skin to the pleura. The, uh, anything above the pleura will be artifact and those artifact that shortly I'm going to talk about that are important for the evaluation pathology of the lung. Here you can see uh, we have a normal uh, linear probe that we put it around that this area here below the skin we see those pattern specific pattern of the muscle here pectoralis muscle major and minor and then below that we can see intercostal uh, muscles three layer that is not very clear on this one and final structure that normally we can see is Plura as a hyper echo uh, line, curving line, depending where we are scanning, is sometimes this way, but most of the time curving concave and sliding with breathing, moving back and forth, up and down. This is a normal uh, ultrasound of the chest wall up to the pleura, and we have other structure we can see here. Uh, here we have rib that has hyperecho surface, care shape, hyperecho, and posterior shadow. If our uh, footprint of probe is big enough, we can see another uh, rib here, that it can give us a face of the frog, or sometimes they called it bat. Uh, it's not a big deal. The most important on this feature we can see is sliding of the uh, plural that we called it long sliding or sliding sign. This is very important finding and it's due to uh, moving of the visceral plural over the parietal uh, plural. That is very important feature in normal long in ultrasound. This feature can be seen much better in uh, linear probe because high frequency and uh, resolution is very higher we can decrease depth but in uh, Kelvinier and uh, sector or echo we can see it just we have to optimize it but those sliding is not very clear on the other two linear is much better here you can see sliding we don't, uh, we cannot uh, differentiate between parietal and visceral, but as long as we can see hyperecho plural moving back and forth with the breath, this is represent that we have untouched visceral plural, that is sliding over the parietal uh, plural. Later we talk about that, that one of the finding in pneumotrox is we losing at that specific spot that uh, pleura has been ruptured. But it's not only in the pneumotrox, in other situation we can see later we talk about that. With this uh, feature, uh, we can do it M mode and find all those structure. When we do M mode on the level of the pleural, here we have a specific pattern in normal situation. We have first those layer that give us a horizontal layer up to the pleura. Here the top one, it looks like a C on the horizon when you watch the C uh, and wave is show. It's those hyper echo line belong to those trabeculation and fascia in the. Uh, muzzle between the intercostal and all of them it create some this uh, pattern we called it C part and beyond the plural 
due to the sliding of the pleura or lung, it creates some kind of the sandpaper on the M mode that we call the shore uh, part or seashore. This is a normal pattern, top one linear fixed uh, sea part and shore part is below the pleura. So this is the hyperechoic line. Here is our pleura and below that is uh, the artifact of the M mode beyond the uh, uh, plural and movement of the plural. So we call this seashore, seashore or sandy beach is a normal M mode of the that part of the line. If uh, we don't have this sliding and we put at that level cursor, it doesn't give us this shore pattern. So it becomes all horizontal li uh, layer, hyperechoic between them, hypoecho. It looks like a barcode. We call it barcode sign or stratosphere sign. That it's uh, one of the classic finding in pneumotrox is this one, but it's not specific for the pneumotrox. In other situations, we can see it later. We are going to talk about that. If we find the spot that the pleura has been ruptured and put our cursor there with breathing in and breathing of patient respiration, we can detect normal that the pleura come to the field of the cursor and when disappear, it give us barcode pattern. This one is very specific more than just barcode for detecting Nomotrox. This is more characteristic and specific for nomotrox compared to the just barcode sign. Later we talk about that. Anything beyond the uh, plural we do on the ultrasound will be artifacts that most of them belong to the propagation artifact and those important artifacts uh, are uh, very useful to, for detecting and diagnosis of uh, uh, lung pathology. Now let's go see what those normal artifacts we can see and what those are abnormal. Another application of ultrasound for evaluating in respiratory system is uh, the evaluating of the Diaphragm function, as we know, the diaphragm function has a critical uh, and important role in respiration. And in many neuromuscular disorder, diaphragm can involve. At top of them is phrenic damage due to surgery, those autoimmune disease and neurologic disorder, Duchenne uh, dystrophy, and uh, on any other. Uh, neurologic problem diaphragm can involve and usually <clears throat> in the old version uh, we can use the fluoroscopy or uh, dynamic MRI but the one of the most reliable and repeatable uh, technique is ultrasound of the diaphragm and we can use this uh, modality to evaluate diaphragm very easily. For that purpose, we can use uh, 2D measuring just how much the diaphragm moved during uh, in, inhale and exhale, and then measure it. There are many techniques for 2D, but does not very accurate and uh, between inter-observer little differences. But M mode uh, and TDI tissue Doppler velocity is very useful and reliable technique for evaluating of uh, the frog function. For that purpose, we uh, go to the uh, mid clavicle at the subcostal or mid axillary at lower part intercostal, and we put our uh, probe uh, sagittal. Then we find the specific spot that can get, give us the cursor almost a parallel to the movement of the diaphragm. As you can see, a little moving is not completely par uh, parallel to the movement. 
if we have that option we can use angle correction angle independent m mode and make it completely parallel to the movement of the off rock at the doom of the the off rock at the mid sagittal or mid axillary then we do this uh, technique m mode in three situation uh, quiet breathing regular breathing sniffing test and deep breathing if the patient can do those other two otherwise just with the regular breathing we can still evaluate the frog uh, function the uh, for the m mode i mentioned we do it in both sides right and left because sometimes we have especially when we have neurologic problem one of those uh, nerves especially due to the surgery or damage uh, unilateral uh, one of those uh, part of the diaphragm left or right can be involved so we have to do on the both side in the right side we use the uh, liver as a window on the left side we use a spleen as a window then we put cursor parallel to that spot uh, then we measure amount of the displacement during two phase inhale and exhale the amount of displacement will be called it excursion or displacement and even that we can measure the timing of during inhale and exhale those uh, technique is uh, for the m mode for tissue doppler or tdi we put sample of the interest area of the tdi at that uh, interest area here then we put sample exactly at the specific spot that give us the most parallel movement of the diaphragm to the our cursor then we put a pulse wave doppler and we measure velocity of that uh, spot of the diaphragm imagine this is this is our diaphragm so we have to put sample volume for tdi velocity and uh, uh, we repeated the, this if it is possible in three situation in both sides the normal uh, range for the excursion should be in both sides ab about 1.5 centimeter when the patient is normal breathing or quiet breathing with the sniff or deep breathing it should be over five centimeter for the uh, tdi it should be over 10 centimeter the peak velocity and there is a differences a ratio between the right side and left side the normal uh, ratio for all those measurements especially m mode excursion should be between 0.5 to 1.6 that is a normal range between the different ratio of the right to the left here you can uh, see how we can measure it uh, for the sniff test we ask the patient when we put exactly at the same spot that is give us parallel to the movement then we ask the patient to sniff then we measure amount of the excursion the time and peak velocity too in those uh, situations that we have hemi uh, hemi diaphragm paralysis we can see paradox movement instead of the moving the diaphragm toward the probe it goes backward all of it and doesn't have any excursion positive or sometimes only we have early uh, paradoxical movement go backward and the rest and the amount of this excursion it has been decreased so we do and repeat all of those study in both side left and right and then based on the finding we can diagnose the problem
up to the next time. Have a wonderful time.